Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Vineetha Nair, a senior partner at Minot Puthani and Company. And uh, this short video is to discuss on the requirement of structured digital database under insider trading regulations, and also the present requirement of furnishing a compliance certificate. This presentation and this recording is only meant for academic purpose and uh, not for any kind of solicitation of professional assignment. If we look at the uh, you know development or genesis of insider trading regulations, we understand that this was first uh, notified in 1993 and thereafter the regulations were repealed and the new set of regulations were rolled out in 2015. However, in both of these regulations, there was no such concept of maintaining a structured digital database. And thereafter, the committee, uh, under the chairmanship of Sri P.K. Vishwanathan, on fair market conduct, the report suggested that there is a need to maintain a database uh, for the intent that whenever an information or UPSI is shared by a company, it may not have control once the same is shared in the manner in which it is utilized by the recipients and therefore there has to be some entry in a database so that uh, a trail can be established which will help the investigators uh, at the time of investigation in, in case there is any kind of violation and therefore the concept of structured digital database was uh, inserted pursuant to the amendment made in 2018 and it was made effective from 1st April 2019. So it has almost been since uh, like three years since the requirement was made effective to maintain a structured digital database with and the intent underlying intent was to assist in establishing a trail of flow of information so as to help the investigators in case of any violation of insider trading regulations. Now, if we look at uh, whether this concept of maintaining a structured digital database is unique to India, the answer would be no, because uh, while we do not have a global equivalent to indicate a precise requirement, but certainly you find a reference of maintenance of insider list in Article 18 of Market Abuse Regulation of the European Union. When you maintain that list in terms of all the employees including the contractual employees and everyone who have access to the inside information in terms of advisors, accountants, credit rating agencies, etc. Now in India, if we talk about the requirement under insider trading regulations, the requirement is to maintain a list of designated persons who are typically the employees or people working within the organization who are identified as DPs based on their uh, seniority or function, which gives them the access to UPSI. However, there, is, there exists a parallel concept of connected persons who by virtue of interaction with these uh, designated persons, they have access or have reasonably, uh, you know, they are presumed to have access to UPSI and therefore they are identified as connected persons. However, there is no list of connected persons which is maintained by any company in India. Similarly, we don't have a corresponding requirement to maintain a list of insiders. Uh, the requirement globally is to have an insider list. Additionally, there is also a concept of permanent insiders for those people who are always in possession of UPSI, say for example, a CEO or an MD, he will always presume to be you know, having access to all kinds of UPSI and therefore there may not uh, be a need to make an entry in any kind of register. Uh, so therefore, it seems that, that there has been an inspiration from these provision and when, you know, the parallel requirements to maintain structured digital database was inserted in insider trading regulations. So if you look at the requirement as it stands now, firstly, this is a responsibility of the board of directors of the company to ensure that uh, the company being a listed entity or be it any organization which is required to handle UPSI, say for example, an intermediary or a fiduciary, they have to maintain a structured digital database. And the manner in which it needs to be maintained is uh, in a format such that it ensures timestamping, it ensures audit trails, and it also ensures non-tampering of the database. So in whatever format it is maintained, the it has to have these inherent features. And the content of uh, structured digital databases, minimum it should capture the name and PAN or any other identifier of the person who is sharing the UPSI, as well as details of the person with whom it is shared. So, thus, so the giver and the recipient of the information 
details in relation to these persons needs to be captured. Other requirements which comes from the regulations is that it has to be preserved for a period of eight years. In case there is any investigation going on, that it needs to be preserved till uh, you know the investigation is completed or till it intends to be relevant. The SDD has to be maintained internally. One cannot outsource it uh, from you know, being maintained by some third party. The FAQs also provide that it cannot be maintained on third party servers like Google or Amazon because it may have access rights to the third person. So in case it is being maintained on a cloud or a server, the access has to remain with the company. If any entry is made, which needs to be altered, you cannot, of course, delete the entry because it has to be non-tamperable. In that case, a revised entry or a rectification or a modification entry can be passed subsequently, giving the details of modification or so-called rectification. Also, this needs to be maintained by every company independently. Uh, it cannot be maintained at group level. So these are the certain requirements which uh, come from Regulation 3, Sub-Regulation 5 and 6 of Insider Trading Regulations, and few things that have been clarified by SEBI and BSE in their FAQs on Insider Trading. Now, coming to the requirement of compliance certificate, uh, we are all aware that in June, you know, after the quarter ended June, several companies were in receipt of notices uh, or emails from the stock exchanges mandating submission of compliance certificate by the compliance officer in relation to maintenance of SDD and making the necessary entries in the SDD. Thereafter, on October 28, 2022, stock exchanges have again rolled out another circular, revising the format of the compliance certificate, and this time, uh, permitting even a PCS to certify the compliance certificate. So it may either be given by the compliance officer or it may be given by a practicing company secretary who may be your secretary auditor or otherwise. Uh, and the timelines now stands for quarter ended September 30. It is to be submitted by November 18. Uh, and for December, quarter ending December, the timeline will be till 21st of Jan 2023. So presently it has been only indicated for these two quarters. Thereafter, stock exchange will again revisit the requirement and notify accordingly for March quarter. So if we talk about the format, of course, we'll be discussing about the format of certificate in the next slide. The manner of submission is in case of BSC, it has to be uploaded uh, using a path which has been indicated on the screen. And in case of NSC, you need to email the certificate to the email ID which has been prescribed and which has also been uh, given in, on the screen. There is also mention about the power of stock exchange to give a notice of one working day and come to inspect the SDDs that are maintained by the company. So therefore, in case that makes the certification even onerous because subsequent to the certification, if there is any kind of inspection done by the stock exchange, in that case, uh, you know, it, it may result in a violation. What is the consequence of violation of SDD in addition to, you know, the penal provisions under SEBI Act, NSC will also, NSC and BSC will also state under the get quote section, the profile section, which reflects on the stock exchange website, it will reflect that the company is non-compliant with respect to maintenance of SDD and this will continue till uh, the stock exchanges are reasonably satisfied about the entity being compliant with the requirement. Whether the certificate needs to be placed before the board, well, there is no express requirement under the circular. However, given the fact that maintenance of SDD is a responsibility of the board of directors in terms of regulation three, sub-regulation five, in our view, since the certificate will indicate the manner in which it is maintained and whether it is in compliance with the regulations, whether necessary entries have been made or not, therefore, this needs to be placed before the board of directors uh, as a kind of assurance reporting to the board. Now, if you look at the format of compliance certificate, it is pretty simplified as compared to the earlier version that we had for quarter ended June 30. Uh, this can be submitted by the compliance officer or by the practicing CS appointed by the company. And this confirmation is on mainly eight parts. So the first thing is talking about whether the company has a structured digital database in place. Here, the question is not about 
a yes or no wherein you know if you're not maintaining an sdd you will not fill the rest of the certificate because there is no option of non maintenance maximum there could be an instance where company is maintaining in excel or maybe in a format which is not in accordance with regulation 3 sub regulation 5 so when i'm confirming the first point i'm actually not just confirming about whether there whether an sdd exists or not rather i'm confirming that the sdd is being maintained in accordance with the requirements given in insider trading regulations second point as to the control that exists as to who can access the sdd this again becomes important because there has to be a control which will which has to be established we all understand that this may not form part of your code of conduct the code of conduct may maximum only provide for the legal requirements of maintenance of sdd and not a detailed requirement as to how the flow of information will happen who will have the right to access to make an entry who will have the right to retrieve the data uh, what will be the periodicity of backup how the flow of information will happen uh, who will you know how the compliance officer will take necessary confirmations from the respective teams or departments so a lot of things that needs to form part of the control in relation to maintenance of sdd may not be documented and so while we are confirming that control exists it becomes necessary to also identify in what manner that control uh, you know does exist it is always suggested to have a kind of sop or some manual wherein all these requirements or control mechanisms is documented including the manner in which a upsi will be determined because it goes hand in hand once the upsi has been identified there after any time when the upsi is being shared internally or externally that is among dps or uh, you know with outsiders be it fiduciaries or intermediaries for legitimate purpose an entry will be required to be made in the sdd and therefore the control document should also carry the manner in which the upsi has to be determined who would be the persons authorized to determine whether it is upsi or not whether the decision has to be documented or not because you may not know that if few years later there is in case of any investigation say we ask for a reasoning as to why this particular piece of information or event was not identified as upsi the third point on the confirmation is all the upsi disseminated in the previous quarter have been captured in the database now when we talk about dissemination we are not relating uh, we are not talking about dissemination to general public because the moment you make a upsi generally available it ceases to be a upsi so if you are talking about capturing in the database it needs to identify with the upsi which has been shared uh, you know before the same is disseminated to the public at large so the dissemination is not about intimation to the stock exchange but sharing of that upsi internally or externally till that information becomes generally available fourth point whether the system has captured the nature of upsi along with data and time so here this is a very important aspect that the sdd is not a record of upsi itself one is not required to capture entire details of upsi the only the nature of upsi say if it is in the nature of financial results or it is dividend or it is corporate restructuring or it is change of kmp whatever is the nature of upsi needs to be indicated what is that actual upsi is not required to be captured in the sdd otherwise anyone who is having to access having an access to the sdd will eventually have access to all the upsi which is not the case it's only a database to indicate the nature of upsi and the person who is in possession of the same who is sharing with the other person so details of the those individuals needs to be captured in the database uh an audit trail is okay along with the day time time so whenever there is an information sharing that happens it needs to be captured along with the date and time of sharing now date and time of sharing if it is if the manner of maintaining sdd or making an entry in sdd is synchronous wherein as soon as the email is sent say with a particular tagging of price sensitive it captures and uh, you know records the information in the sdd in that case there there won't be any time gap between the actual dissemination of the information and recording in the sdd however if it is asynchronous wherein the information is first sent and thereafter an entry is being made manually in the database in that case again the control document should provide what would be the timeline within which an entry should be made in case 
there is a delay in making an entry. Suppose we realize that there was some UPSI shared in the previous quarter for which an entry was not made. We would still recommend to make a de delayed entry instead of not making an entry so that it remains on record about the instance of sharing the UPSI between designated persons or with outsiders, capturing the date and time of sharing the information. Of course, the date of entry would be subsequent, which is fine. What will get timestamped is the actual uh, date of making the entry, not the date of sharing. So when the entry is being made in the SDD, there it will be timestamped. And once the entry is made, it cannot be altered or tampered with. Next fifth point, we need to confirm that the database has been maintained internally and an audit trail is maintained. So internally maintenance, in case you're relying on any third party software, it will have to be installed on the company server so that the access rights remain only with the authorized persons within the company. And in relation to the audit trail, each time an entry is made, modified, deleted, there has to be a trail to indicate the nature of modification or deletion that has been carried out. Last point to confirm is that the data is non-tamperable and has the capacity to maintain the records for eight years. So non-tamperability again should come as a feature of the software which is being used or the medium in which it is being preserved, uh, maintained. And in whatever format this is maintained, it should have the feature of being able to preserve it for eight years. Otherwise the company will have to ensure taking backup frequently so that uh, the underlying uh, entries that are made are preserved for a period of eight years. Now, while confirming on this points, in case the company is non-compliant in any of the six, it has to simply strike through and then provide an explanation below. Last part, we are also confirming on the number of events during the quarter which were required to be entered in the STD. Now here a common question arises, what will be the meaning of the event? Should I say every entry is an event or every UPSI is an event? In our view, it is every UPSI that should be counted as an event because information relating to an event may be shared multiple times internally or externally. And each time information about that event is shared, it will require an entry to be made in the STD. So here it will be depending on the instances of UPSI that originated during the quarter or that must have originated during the previous period, previous period but continues to remain UPSI in the current quarter and were shared with persons internally or externally. So accordingly, the number of UPSI or the number of events that are in the nature of UPSI for which the entry was required to be made in the SDD during that quarter is something that needs to be reported in this part. Thereafter, if there were any non-compliance for the quarter for which the reporting is being done, that needs to be provided in the certificate along with the remedial action taken. So we all understand that this is still in the evolution process. While the companies were aware about the requirement of maintenance of SDD, however, the companies were not maintaining it in the required format or with the required controls. And now that there is a great, there is greater clarity person to the FAQs, person to the certification requirement, the companies will be will now begin to maintain it in the requisite format, ensuring the uh, you know required conditionalities. And accordingly, if there is any gap, then whatever is the remedial action which the company proposes to undertake should also be indicated in the certificate. Now, where the certificate is being given by a practicing CS, we understand that this being a format of certificate cannot be modified to much of an extent. And therefore, a PCS who is certifying may want to indicate about the documents relied upon uh, on the systems or the approach followed on the representations that it may have relied upon. And therefore, the PCS may ideally put in an excerpt uh, you know, in the format that we follow for uh, secretarial audit report or ASE, et cetera, wherein it, that can be more in a form of a report, uh, which will form the basis for giving this certificate. Lastly, talking about the applicability of SDD to intermediaries or fiduciaries. Regulation 3, subregulation 5 talks about the board of directors of the listed entity and head of organization of every entity required to handle UPSI in the ordinary course of business. So when you have banks, merchant bankers, 
statutory auditors or practicing company secretaries, practicing chartered accountants who are required to handle UPSI in the ordinary course of business. They, they are fiduciaries or intermediaries under the PIT regulations and therefore they are also required to maintain SID. There may be an instance where the UPSI relating to a listed entity may originate at the end of the intermediary or a fiduciary. For example, if a fraud has been uh, you know, identified or if say stock exchange is intending to take some action debarring the promoter or debarring the listed entity from accessing the securities market or if the lender is going to take uh, some decision relating to forensic audit or declaring an NPA. So, so if the information originating from the intermediary or fiduciary, fiduciary itself is a UPSI in the context of the listed entity, in that case, when the same is shared, an entry will be made in SDD. Similarly, if there is, if the intermediary or fiduciary has received any information from the listed entity, and it is again being shared with some other party, in that case also, because there is a sharing of UPSI, an entry will be required to be made in the SDD. As of now, uh, the provisions indicated that the entry was required to be made only on sharing of UPSI and not on receiving of UPSI. But SEBI FAQs as well as the stock exchange FAQs has mandated this requirement that even when you're receiving UPSI, a parallel entry has to be made in the SDD. It's a kind of a counter entry or a duplicate entry that will be made by the receiving party. So each time a listed entity shares UPSI, the listed entity will enter in their own SDD and thereafter the receiving party, the entity will have to maintain its own SDD and make a counter entry. We understand this will increase the compliance burden for merchant bankers, banks, and you know many other fiduciaries, intermediaries who, uh, who generally receive UPSI in the ordinary course of business from, from their client companies. And therefore, of course, SEBI may consider to uh, you know, revisit this requirement as to is it of any use wherein the, uh, the fiduciaries or intermediaries are simply maintaining a counter entry copy of SDD. Now, if that is the requirement as it stands so, how the same can be ensured? The, the listed entity at the time of sharing the information has to indicate that the information is in the nature of UPSI and this will be entered in the SDD and along with that supply the relevant details to enable the intermediary and fiduciary to make a parallel entry in their own, own SDD. As of now, there is no requirement of submitting a compliance certificate by the intermediaries or fiduciaries. It is only on the listed entity, be it equity or a debt listed entity. However, the other requirements under PIT regulations are required to be ensured by the fiduciaries or intermediaries. So since there is a lot of actionable in, in relation to SDD, given the present framework and the listed entities would be submitting their certificates by November 18th for quarter ended September 30 and thereafter for December quarters as well. It may or may not be certified by a PCS that is still optional. The compliance officer may choose to certify it by itself or it, you know, subsequently it may have a PCS certification as a part of third party assurance or a maker checker to give additional comfort to the board of directors. So that's all from our side. There is a lot of material on this or detailed PPT on SDD as well as the FAQs on maintenance of SDD, which is available on our website. Uh, you may visit the same. And in case of any queries, kindly post it in the comment section. Thank you.